This digital download print did $19,000 in the last month. This one did $14,000 in the last month. And this one did close to $6,000 in the last month. Selling digital downloads is a great way to make passive income after you have done the upfront work. For the example that I'm showing you today, all that you would have to do is create a design that a customer would want. They would then purchase that design download it immediately, and then they can print it themselves or take it to their local print shop. And I'll show you examples of what I mean. So this is for digital wall art, and the majority of these listings here are digital downloads. And here's a great example. It is a set that a customer would purchase, and it costs them $6. They download the files, and then they print it themselves. And here's another great example. This is vintage wall art specifically for landscapes. And this listing is for digital downloads, so you instantly download and print this set of nine vintage European paintings. And I know you may be asking yourself, how do you create art like this with limited skill sets? With Kittle's new AI feature, the options are endless for what art you can create and sell on Etsy. It's extremely easy to use. All that you have to do is write a prompt and describe what it is that you want to see and then choose an image or clip art style and then generate your image. We will first change our canvas size. So I'll select this gear icon. Underneath custom size, I will change this to inches and then our width will be 16 and our height will be 20. And the reason for setting our first canvas size to 16 by 20 is because the most common aspect ratios for prints width to height is our four by five ratio, three by four ratio, two by three ratio, and then we have our five by seven size and our 11 by 14 size. At the end of this tutorial, we will have five different file sizes that our customer can download. But let's say for example, our customer wanted to print an eight by 10 in the four by five ratio. If we create the largest size within this ratio, the 16 by 20, they can easily downscale the size to their eight by 10. So the only thing that we need to do is create the largest size within each ratio, as well as these two sizes for our customers. So we'll go to the left hand side down here at the bottom where it says Kittle A. AI, here you can describe exactly what you want to see. So you can be as creative as you want and descriptive as you would like. So for this example, I will do a mountain landscape. And then if you scroll down, you can see you can select different image styles, clip art styles, vector styles, as well as pattern styles. And if I select show all here, there are a lot of different styles you can choose from. So we have digital art, anime, acrylic, psychedelic, as well as many more options to choose from. But for this example, I will select digital art. And now I'll go ahead and select generate image. And here is our first piece of artwork that we created. So I'll go ahead and drag it up into the top left hand corner. And then I will make it bigger to fit into my canvas size and it will crop some of it out. So we'll have to position it exactly where we want it. You can go ahead and use the arrows on your keypad to make the slightest adjustments if needed, or you can just select the R and drag it over if you prefer. And on the right hand side here, you can easily adjust the brightness as well as the contrast. And lastly, the saturation. If you wanted to add other things to it, you can very easily on Kittle. So if you wanted to add text, you can do that, different elements, etc., depending on what look it is that you're going for. But for me personally, I wanna sell just a simple landscape without any extra text or elements. And the options are endless with Kittle AI. You really can create just about anything that you want. So here's just a few different examples and you can see the different prompts that they gave. So a beautiful landscape with red trees, a church and snow. So this one's extremely descriptive and it did a really great job, but be creative and think of different prompts that you can give the AI to create some really cool artwork that you can sell on Etsy. And with the different styles that you can choose, you really can do just just about anything. And let's say you wanted to sell this as a set, you could easily do so by just generating another prompt. So for example, you could do waterfall landscape or river landscape, etc. For the example today, I will just be doing one print. So we're ready to download it. And remember this canvas size is 16 by 20. So this is for our four by five ratio. And as I mentioned in the beginning, you only need to create the largest size because if your customer wants to downsize, they can easily do so. So we'll go ahead and rename this project to our mountain landscape four by by five ratio. And in the top right hand corner, I'll select download. And next to DPI, I will change this to 300 for the best print quality. And then I will download this as a JPEG. Now we've completed the biggest size for our four by five ratio, which will work for these smaller sizes. Now let's do our 11 by 14. So I'll go up to the gear icon here and then under custom size, change this to 11 by 14, then hit confirm. 
and then I can zoom out so it's easier to reset it. And the biggest trick here is just to make sure that the canvases are as similar as possible in terms of what is being shown on the canvas and what will print. So that looks pretty good to me. I'll go ahead and rename this. And this one is our 11 by 14 inches. And then I'll select download. Again, change this to 300 DPI and then download as a JPEG. I will now go ahead and repeat the process for the biggest sizes for my three by four ratio, two by three ratio, and my five by seven. And then we'll jump back into the tutorial. After you finished creating your five different files and downloading them to your computer, we are now ready to create our mockups. In Kittle, you're able to make mockups if you'd like. So in the top right hand side, you'll select mockup. And if you scroll down here towards the bottom, they have a few different options under wall art. And this one here looks pretty good. Now I will drag it up to the top right hand corner and drop it in on this canvas so it looks as realistic as possible. And I'll try to make it as close as possible to my downloaded files. After creating your mockup, you can go ahead and download that to your computer. There are other options as well, like Creative Market, Pixabay, and Shutterstock but you'd have to download those mockups and then import them into your design program and create your mockups that way. Another great mockup tool that you can use if you prefer is a more automated tool such as Placeit. So I'll go ahead and search wall art and you'll see here there are a lot of different options to choose from and once you find one that you like, go ahead and select it. And then on the left hand side, select insert image and select upload from your device and go and locate that file that you want to import. Now you wanna make sure that your art fills the entire canvas so that it will fill the entire frame here as you see in the live preview. Once you have it set where you'd like, go ahead and select crop. So this mock-up looks great. You'll see they also give you other options that you might like that you can choose from if you wanna make additional mock-ups. After you finish creating the mock-up that you like, you'll go ahead into the top right-hand corner and select download, and that will download it to your computer. Now we are ready to create our listing on Etsy. So go to your shop manager. On the left-hand side, select listings. And in the top right-hand corner, you'll select add a listing. We'll first add our mock-up photos that we just created. I also recommend adding a listing photo for the different aspect ratios and sizes that you offer for your digital downloads. And you can easily create this in Kittle or Canva or whatever design program that you are using. And remember, you don't have to do these exact ratios that I'm doing. You can go and look at your competitor and see what sizes they offer and then offer those sizes in your store or really whatever sizes you would like to offer to your customers. Now we are ready to create our title and I highly recommend using all 140 characters. This will increase your chance of being found and make sure you're using descriptive keywords that buyers would use to search your item. And you don't need to overcomplicate the system, just think like a buyer and figure out how you can connect the buyer with your listing. And an easy way for finding keywords for your title is either by going to Etsy directly and looking at the top performing listings and see how they're structuring their title and what type of keywords they're using. Or you can use the Everbe Chrome extension tool, which does the same thing, but it just speeds up the process. And I'll use this listing as an example, but with the Everbe Chrome extension tool, not only will it give you really valuable estimates on estimated monthly sales, monthly revenue, total sales, listing age, etc. But it will also show you the different keywords and tags that these specific listings are using. And if there's a keyword that is applicable to your listing that you're going to be selling, you can easily select the keyword. So printable wall art, I'll go ahead and select that and that will copy it to my clipboard. And then I can go back to my listing and then easily paste it. So I'm going to go ahead and fill out the rest of my keywords by looking at high converting listings and then making sure that they're applicable to my actual listing. And the way I like to structure my keywords is just by doing a comma in between each keyword space and then my next keyword. After completing your title, scroll down and next to about this listing. For who made it, we'll select I did. What is it? It's a finished product. When did you make it? 2020 to 23. Category, you can type in wall art or whatever it is that you're selling. And then for this example, I'll select wall art and digital prints. And the rest of these are optional, so you can decide if you'd like to fill them in or not. But I'll go ahead and skip this section. Next to room, I will go ahead and select bedroom, dorm, entryway. Um, if it's applicable, you can select game room, kitchen and dining, whatever is accurate, make sure that you add that for your listing because you'll see here adding accurate rooms will be helpful for buyers to find your items. It's just another way for the algorithm to really know what it is that you're selling and so that it can put it in front of the right audience. Subject, you can fill that in if you'd like, if it's applicable. And then renewal options, you can either choose automatic or manual. For me personally, I like to select manual just because if the listing doesn't perform well and it doesn't sell, I can manually renew it if I'd like, rather than Etsy automatically renewing it and charging me the 20 cent listing fee. But it's up to you what you would like to do. Next to type, you will select digital file. And then in the description, you can go ahead and fill this in. 
but just make sure you include the necessary information that a customer would need to know. So a few important things to include is reminding the customer that this is a digital download, that there is no physical product that will be shipped. You can also include the different aspect ratios and sizes that you offer and that are available for the digital download, as well as any other information that you think is necessary and important for your customer to know. Usually at the end of my description, I like to include different links to other listings that are related, as well as a link to my shop in hopes that they'll go and add more items to their cart. Next to section, it's optional, but I highly recommend including a section for whatever category it is that you're selling in. So for this example, if you're doing landscape, you can have a section specifically for landscape art so that customers can easily find things in your shop as well as it makes your shop more cohesive and organized. You'll want to make sure you fill in all 13 tags and again using keywords that are proven and that are performing well on Etsy and that are applicable and related to your listing. And I highly recommend making sure you use all 13 because if you don't, you're just missing out on opportunities to be found. And with your tags, again, you can use the Everbe Chrome extension tool. So if I sort this by estimated revenue in the last month, it will sort my results by the top performing ones. So here's another great example of digital wall art. I can go ahead and select this one and you'll see the stats on this listing. So the estimated monthly revenue was $19,000. If you scroll down, you'll see the keywords and you can see the volume of the keywords, the trend of the keywords. And if they're applicable, you can go ahead and just select it and it will copy it and then go back to your listing and then paste that in your tags. After you're done filling out your tags, you can go ahead and price your item depending on what you want to charge. So if I'm selling an individual print, I'll charge anywhere between six to $10. But if you're selling a set, obviously you can charge more. And this is entirely up to you what you want to charge. Go and look at your competitors and see what it is that they're charging and then decide on a price for your own listing. Quantity, I will go ahead and change this to 999. That way I won't have to update it all the time. And then I'll scroll down and here's where we will add our digital files. You are allowed to add up to five files, but I like to create a zip folder with all of my files within the that folder and I'll show you how to do that. Here in my downloads, I will go ahead and create a new folder and I will name this Mountain Landscape. And here you'll see our five different files. So I'll go ahead and select all of these files and drag them into this new folder that I just created. After doing so, I will right click on this folder and select compress to zip file. Now we have the zip folder that we can upload to Etsy. And now I will select upload file and go and locate that zip folder that we just created. So if you get this error that says, please upload files that are under 20 megabytes, there's an easy way to resolve this problem without reducing the resolution of your files. And it's by sharing a Google Drive link. In the top left-hand corner, select new and then file upload. So here's my zip folder. I'll go ahead and select open and now right click on it and select get link. And then under general access, hit this drop down arrow and select anyone with the link. That way your customer will be able to access this link and then select copy link and now open a Google doc and create a new document. And you can include anything on this document. So you can say, thank you so much for supporting our shop. And then say something like click here to download your files, as well as you can include any other information that you want your customer to know. After doing so, you can highlight this where it says click here to download your files. And then up here, select insert link and then paste that link that you created on Google Drive and then select apply. Here we have our clickable Google Drive link. Now we need to add this to our Etsy listing and you do that by going to file, select download and then select PDF document. That will download to your computer and then jump back over to Etsy and then select upload file and add that Google Doc PDF that we just created. And you'll see it's under 20 megabytes, so it will work. And when our customer purchases our listing, they will download this PDF and within that PDF, they can access that Google Drive link and download all of their files. If you would like, you can also share information here for your customer on how to download the files as well as how to go about printing their new wall art. Now that your listing is created, you can go ahead and select publish and your listing is ready for customers to purchase. If you wanna learn about other digital product ideas that can replace your nine to five, click right here. And if you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.